Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to look at um, how to set up and test web services. So XSageX3 comes with a built-in web service and it actually has a built-in test tool that I'm going to show you how to quickly set up and use. So first thing you're going to want to do is you want to sign in. Preferably admin if you have it or an admin related account because we're going to do uh, some creating and it's in the administration module which typically the admin has access to. So first things first you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check and make sure you're in the right folder because the folder that we're going to add it to you want to make sure you're in the right one. Technically you don't have to be in it but we're going to do some testing afterwards so it's easier just to make sure you're in the right folder. So I am. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check our host which you can find under administration, administration, servers, host. We want to make sure that the host has the ability to host web services. So one of the primary functions is that it has to have a web service child process. So you need at least a, a one or higher value in here. This is for how many pools you can have with channels assigned to it. So right now I only have one, so that's fine. You need at least one. If you have zero, then it's not going to create anything. You'll get an error message. So we want to make sure we have at least one here. If you don't, change it to at least one. You'll want to save and then close out of here because you need that. The next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to administration again. And then under the administration subsection, web services, and then you'll see that there is, should be an option called classic SOAP tools configuration. Click on that. This is where all of your SOAP pool configuration is done. Um, let's see if anything wants to stop one here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. You're going to want to give it an alias, something that you can recognize, easy to type in, because we're going to do some typing. So I'm making it short, just abbreviating web service pool. I want it to automatically start for me. I'm going to pick the endpoint or folder you want it to be assigned to. Now if you have multiple folders, you're going to have to create multiple of these, one for each folder. A locale, which is a language code. I want it to be in English for me. The user code. Now here, typically you would want to use a user code that you specifically created for web service, not the administration uh, admin, because the admin is tied to the dev badge. And by doing this, you are going to be using up a dev badge every time a web service call comes in. So this is not ideal, but for the sake of the, of the video, I'm just going to use it. Next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to set an initialization size, which is the starting number of channels. I'm just going to go with two. That's the default. Then you have a maximum size. Uh, I'm just going to say two is the maximum because I'm not going to do a lot of stuff. But if you have fluctuation in web calls and fluctuation in resources, you can change the maximum. And what it does is that if you have, let's say, two here and four here, if the two channels isn't able to handle the workflow and you're getting a queue, the system will automatically create more channels up to the maximum to handle the influx of, of um, requests coming in, whether they be orders or, or outgoing or whatever you got going on. So this number, you can set it higher to like 10 or whatever. You know, it just depends on the on the business. But again, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to, I just want everything to be a standard. Unused lifetime. What this means is that after 20 minutes, it will drop whatever you have remaining down to the new size. So if I had, let's say, 10 here, and I have 2 here, and I have 20 minutes, if the system had an influx of cases in it, uh, or of uh, orders, like requests coming in, and this 2 this size had to go up to, let's say, like 6, and then all of those requests went away, after 20 minutes, it will drop off those, those extra 4 that it added if they're not being used after 20 minutes. The lifetime minute is 720. After 720 minutes, all uh, channels get removed and recreated as like a way to auto refresh. If you put zero, then it never does. But you should have a value here because you want them to refresh over time. You don't want them to stack information. Um, this also helps to make sure that if there's anything corrupt and channels get uh, sideline or fall out of queue that at some point in time they will be refreshed 
and be re-added to the queue. It's kind of just more of like a basic process. So once you have all the information you want in, we'll, we'll, we're going to leave X3 runtime tags alone because that's a whole separate can of worms I'm not going to open. I'll go ahead and hit save. So I should have a status here. I'm going to go ahead and start it. So this is where you would typically get the error if you don't have at least a one in web service child processes in the host function. You would get an error here saying that it can't start it because there's no host. You know, there's no host. Or something along that line. But that's where you typically get it. So now that I've started it, you can see I have my pool with, oops, there we go, with my two channels, because I have initialized that too. So you can see my sessions, my PIDs, those all per, per, uh, pertain to process IDs. And then you can see when the expiration dates are. So when it hits these expiration dates, then it resets. It just, it just drops these and recreates new ones, so you'll get new PIDs and things like that. But the point is, is that now we have it set up, so really easy, set up, done. Next thing to do is we're going to test the setup. So first thing we want to do is we want to find a publication. Uh, this is no reason why I asked for an admin account, because we have to go into development, which is primarily uh, to the dev badge, which is admin. So under development, we're going to go to script, script dictionary, scripts, and then you'll see there's one called web services. Which, you, if you're lazy, you can just type in G-E-S-A-W-E at the top bar here, and it will load the same function. So here is where we pick the publication. The publication is like a publicized uh, XML content for a object. And what I mean by object is if you have load every, any classic function, if you use any sort of classic functions, you get this left list here like this. This is an object function, so you're allowed to pull information from the object. The object is also tied to a table, so you can get additional information. And uh, you know, that's a whole that's again a whole other topic that we can discuss. We can talk about objects and, and table relations at another time. But for the sake of this, we are just going to use a publication. We're going to find one. I like to use sales orders. So if I scroll over, you can see an object list. If you're familiar with the abbreviation SOH for sales order header. You saw earlier there was a BPC, which is the business partner customer, BPC. So it's usually pretty easy to understand. So I'm going to go ahead and select the publication that I want. So what I actually have here is an e-commerce. This is a default one. So if you have the C folder in, there's a default publication called ECM SOH, which is what I'm going to use. Object oriented. Here's your object. Here's your transaction. So this is sales order, and then if you were to load sales order from the front end, like from the sales module, you'll have a transaction called ECM. So I'm just going to select this, and then if it's not saved, you'll get a little, you'll get the little save icon. You want to click that to save it first, because if you've never used it before, it's going to ask you to save it, because this is a default. And then after that, you'll want to hit publish or publication button to publish it. You can test the publication by clicking XML view. And if you get one of these, uh, let's go to notepad, that's fine. Then you'll, you'll get the XML code of the publication. This is so sales orders, or so that the web servers can read it. And you'll just see there's a bunch of different language barriers for it, for in case you need it in different languages. Let me close this. OK, so now that that's all taken care of, so we're going to want to remember this name. So let's grab this. Because we're going to use that in our test. Uh, whoops. I'm going to pull up Notepad and paste it here. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go grab our, our pool if you don't remember it. So if you forgot the name, we'll go back and double check. Web service pool. Okay, alias. Pool. Now it's time to go test. So really you only need two things. You need the pool set up and then a publication to test with. Make sure you pick a publication for a module that you have. So if you don't use sales and purchasing, obviously don't pick those because you're not going to get any return. So 
where we go to test stuff is we have this built-in function called Classic Soap Web Services. This is a uh, generic testing tool to just test so you can see how or if your web services is set up. You know, because if it's not set up correctly or, or whatever, you won't be able to utilize this tool. You'll get errors, then you can go troubleshoot the errors. But anyways, it's just a very generic WSDL or WSDL. Uh, WSDL is just kind of like a universal name that everyone calls it. It's pretty much a connecting URL. So you can see here we got our stub for our tester. So if you click on the name, it'll bring this uh, set of ports up. And if you click the, the Chevron, you'll get a list of commands that you can run. So these are all the commands that you can use through web services. Just to test it out, I always stick with something basic like query. So I'm just going to have it return top the top five sales orders from like drop down off in the mirror. So I'm going to click on the query tool. We're going to go ahead and put in a language code, ENG. Make sure you type it in all caps. Pulios, it's case sensitive, so I had to put it in all caps as well. And the publication, which is also case sensitive, put that all in caps as well. So those are the three bits of information. The language code usually corresponds to whatever you select in the Pulios. So if you pick the British, you want to put the British code here, French, French code, you know, and so forth and so forth. So we don't have to put any object keys because we're not testing that. And we're just going to say, give me back the top five sales orders. Now, if everything is set up correctly, when I click the invoke, I should get a list of sales orders. Here we go. And you can see here the default configuration is XML. So if you want to change that, if we go back here to the request, and let's say you want it in JSON, you can put in a request configuration of JSON. But just for the sake of video, we're just testing it out to make sure it works, and it looks like it's working. So that's the easiest way to test it. And you can see I get sales order one, and then seven, and then, or I mean, uh, two, which is 007, and three, 006, so forth, so forth. And then you can double check by closing this out. And if we actually go to sales orders, sales, orders, orders, and select ECM, which is the one we were using, you can see we have that weird number one at the top, and then we have seven, six, five, four, three. So it just gave me the top five here. So now you know it's working. And everything is set, ready to go. So now you have an idea of how to set it up um, and test it out and make sure that it's working. I will have a couple of other videos coming uh, next month, which I'm going to show how to set up a specific user that doesn't consume a badge, which is very important and how to test it outside of the software. Because right now everything's been within X3, but what if you wanted to use like Postman or, or Soap UI or anything like that? I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to do that as well. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you all next time.